Good afternoon. I'm Mark Carkenny, the Senior Manager for Government Initiatives with act -IAC, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's webinar on Five Steps to Chaotic Cloud Spend, sponsored by Aptio. Today's webinar will feature a discussion about how, as organizations move from on-premises to cloud infrastructures, a good portion of their time is spent analyzing and consolidating their cloud spend. Our speakers will walk through five steps to help you stop chaotic cloud spend decisions and start gaining control of cloud costs that the entire organization can fall in line with. For those of you who have joined us in the past, thanks for your attendance again. And for those of you who are new, welcome. Before we begin, I'd like to ask you all to feel free to submit questions using the Q&A box on your screen. Our moderator will be curating questions for us at the end of the presentation. Additionally, there are two resizable boxes on your screen that show today's slides and presenters. Feel free to manipulate those boxes to fit your preferences. Finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be made available for review in the coming days. With all that said, thanks again to our sponsor, Aptio, and I'll turn it over to you, Bob. Thanks. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, and um, I just wanted to introduce our uh, guests this afternoon. I have Reggie Cummings, from Executive Director of Infrastructure Operations for IT Operations and Services for the Department of Veteran Affairs. And Ed Mays is the Executive, Executive Director, Enterprise Data Management, and Engineering Director at, for Homeland Security. Uh, currently, Ed is specific to CBP, and we're excited to hear uh, both gentlemen and their insights around this space. Uh, just for everyone's benefit, I'm going to take probably five, six minutes sort of laying the groundwork of this particular space. Then we'll get into a series of questions and answers for, with our guests and come full circle back to the five steps to stop chaotic cloud spend. There is an associated white paper that goes along with this topic as well. So first things first, you know, everyone was sort of moving thinking about migrating applications and systems to the cloud even before COVID. In fact, I, I commented to many senior leaders in government that the IT world is becoming more real time for a lot of agencies and programs. And not only is a function of cloud migration, but hybrid cloud application rationalization, you layer agile on top of that. And now this sort of new paradigm of telework and a greater impact to the cloud uh, as a function of COVID. So a lot of that is affecting federal budgets and budgets and plans that are put together a year or two years ago have frankly gone out the window. A lot of agencies are now optimizing and replanning based upon this brave new world. So a lot of the focus today is how do you not only move in the direction of the cloud, but how do you do it smartly and avoid uh, a lot of the cloud spend that you can be affected by. So we're gonna drill down into what those areas are and how both VA and CBP are tackling this very issue. So the big thing that we're seeing is really four areas there, and it's again, a function of COVID as you add to the complexity and the real time nature of cloud is that we see a short term sort of triage situation going on, but also that long term rewriting of the business plan for the program or the component or the agency itself. And the whole focus clearly is the mission, 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 mission. What am I in support of? Is it the warfighter? Is it the veteran? Is it continuity of operations and support of uh, border protection? You know, what is it that I'm trying to support within my mission and how can I make the proper investments and securely deliver those services to my end users and customers? So I, I submit that a lot of the agencies and programs are really becoming more uh, in the mindset of a commercial mentality of commercial best practices. You know, how do you run your organization like a business? How can you pivot and adjust from a triage or short-term short, short perspective? And how do you do what-if analysis? You know, these are unprecedented, unprecedented times where the agility and your ability to pivot and include not only the IT sort of lifecycle management and movement and migration to the cloud, but how does human capital actually get affected when you weave that into your scenario planning as well? And then ultimately, how do you rebuild that long-term plan as you submit and keep uh, government agencies like OMB and governance bodies up to date on how you're complying and from a governance perspective uh, to answer the mail to them as well? So a lot going on, 
And again, COVID is definitely uh, making the challenges of cloud uh, even more more uh, impactful and effect, affecting everyone. So the big thing that a lot of folks have come to find out once you get into this cloud game, and some of you have been into it a little bit longer than others, is that a lot of the buying that takes place is very decentralized. So folks can go off and if they have the proper contract or even a credit card, they can consume cloud resources. It, it's driving a lot of acquisition and contracting folks bananas at some level because they're off doing their own thing. And it's almost jumped ahead of the formal acquisition process in some respects. And uh, that's one thing that we'll be uh, getting into a little bit. And then how do you sort of do that cloud adoption? That is a material effect of many agencies at many levels. So how do you control and manage that correctly and smartly as you perform that migration and going forward plan once you're living in the cloud? Uh, how do you understand the variable notion of consumption and replacing fixed data costs versus variable costs? Again, I would submit that that's another area that acquisition is trying to catch up on is that do they have the proper um, contracting vehicles in place to allow sort of cloud spend in its real time nature to be managed correctly? So there's a lot of things going on behind that where we'll get into things such as reserved instances and how people can buy cloud and manage it in different ways. And then ultimately the inefficiencies really getting under the hood of what's going on. It's great that people are migrating to the cloud, but what is it really costing me? Who's consuming it? How do you show them what they're consuming? And how do they understand the, you know, the general theme for a long, long time is that people run around town and they think IT is free. And now with the cloud, uh, it's even more uh, important for agencies and programs to let people know that, A, it's not free, but here's what it's actually costing you. And frankly, here's your bill if you really want to know what you're consuming. So I, I see a lot going on on the left-hand side right now across different agencies, and some are further along than others. The notion here is how do you help people look at automation as a way to manage their cloud spend. In a similar vein, a lot of folks are trying to automate how they manage their traditional IT spend. Most notably, you know, what's my O&M versus DME? How do I free up and sort of retire systems so I can modernize and, and do things such as move to the cloud? But how do I get to, this, to the right side of the equation? How do I have a repeatable, sustainable, manageable system that I can understand my costs, understand my cloud spend, and share that back to my stakeholders, uh, as opposed to what I see have gone on in the past, a lot of handcrafting, a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of throwing people at it. And again, if you tie in the real-time nature uh, of the cloud world, it's very hard to keep up. In fact, I would say that there's actually a methodology and a, a governing body out there, not uh, frankly, blessed by the federal government yet, but there's a life cycle approach to managing cloud. It's called FinOps, kind of like that term, financial operations. It's almost like a NOC or a SOC, uh, but for the financial folks that we'll be talking to this afternoon. And really the focus is, how do I get informed of what's going on with my cloud bills? I need that visibility. And then once I get that visibility, how do I optimize? You know, how do I right size? How do I uh, automate and understand what's the best package to buy from my cloud provider so I'm not overpaying or getting hit with the bill down the road that I wasn't expecting. Then ultimately, how do I operate this on a continuous basis? That's really the key. At the end of the day, much like any platform or knock or sock, you want to have that real-time view, that dashboard of your business so you can turn the knobs accordingly and, and manage what's going on but in this case, from a cloud perspective. So as we get into this today, uh, this is the last slide before we get into the, the questions to our, our speakers today, is that you know the big questions a lot of folks are trying to get their arms around as you look at a FinOps life cycle of uh, understanding, being informed, optimize, and manage is, do I have that current visibility? How do I allocate those cloud costs? How do I budget and forecast when I'm flying a little bit blind? How do I get my arms around my cloud business so I can do better forecasting, better budgeting, better spend? And how do I benchmark, you know, are some doing it better versus others? I find this in a lot of agile organizations. A good example is the Air Force with uh, their SEC DevOps world. 
So they're trying to understand with the different swim lane teams, you know, who's consuming cloud most efficiently and how can they um, really be smart about how they uh, are consuming cloud. And then ultimately, if something goes sideways, how do I get notified? I mean, like anything else, you want to be ahead of the game and not get that bill se several months down the road and say, you know, where did this bill come from? So um, before I get into the addi additional slides, why don't I pause there? And I uh, had a bunch of questions I was going to go through for our, our um, guests today. And the first one I'll, I'll go to is uh, Reggie, you know, help us understand your move to the cloud and, and how did it all start? And uh, I think that'll be helpful to the group and we can kind of drill down from there and I'll, I'll ask you the same question, Ed, after um, we go through this with Reggie. Sure, yeah, thanks, Bob. So, so our started formally, if you will, I'm sure that we had things that were going on that predates, uh, predates me, just like any other organization. A lot of things that were probably, you know, teetering on that from a virtualization standpoint, uh, maybe some back end, you know, private cloud activities. But the formal um, approach, at least, at least from, uh, you know, the, the use of, of the commercial, you know, space, uh, AWS and Azure primarily, um, kind of has its, its lineage back to about 2015. We had Tiger Team that was stood up to, to really investigate, you know, how to, how to start to bring uh, some of that that capability to to, to bear uh, on on a number of our solutions, uh, and then maybe about 2017, uh, kind of going along with um, you know the the cloud first uh, you know initiative and and you know kind of edicts, um, you know we established uh, a formal program, if you will, that that you know kind of uh, put the backdrop on our overall cloud strategy, which which resulted in us creating. Uh, a centralized enterprise cloud solutions office. Uh, and then we went forward from there uh, with launching our, our VA enterprise cloud uh, as, as, a, as a backdrop to the, the establishment of that, uh, of that organization. So, um, so I would say that, again, we, we had some, some things that were kind of hovering in, in 2015, but we uh, went forward smartly with our overall um, uh, cloud strategy with the the, the complementary um, formal office in, in 2018, uh, and we've been uh, working towards our migration efforts and, and uh, evolutions associated with the cloud since that since that point. Terrific. And Ed, on your side with CBP, how did it all start? So, so Bob, uh, great story here. Um, I came on in 2016 in CVP, and I, I was selected partially, I think, because of my cloud background, working something called McKeats inside the Marine Corps, which is Marine Corps cloud, working cloud and industry. And when I when I arrived, the first thing my boss said, you know, what do you know about cloud? We need to get there. And that was, you know, uh, late 2016. And we quickly you know, did an assessment of where we were from a business perspective. I will tell you, you know, my, my data center uh, um, Springfield was, I will call it a, you know, it, it was highly functional. We did a lot of great work, but we were spending a lot of money. And we started to look at, you know, what that spend looked like, how could we reduce that spend? And if cloud was going to one, give us more capability um, help us deliver capability to our customers faster, those, you know, those officers and agents uh, in the field. Um, and, you know, was that going to improve our resiliency? Because, you know, our, our organization had suffered from numerous uh, outages, whether they were app outages, power outages, hardware outages, and those things, you know, just the, um, the CAPEX cost uh, were astronomical. So that kind of drove us in 2016 in the direction of the cloud. And we started to look at um, the cloud first policy and what that meant to us. Um, and we started an organization um, and we started to look at what would we do to get to the cloud. Part of that was there was a strategy um, called data center consolidation in the vet in federal government. And so we were looking at, you know, we had three data centers that we were supporting. And so how could we reduce cost across the data centers? And 
one of those things would be, you know, what could we really afford to shut down, um, which, you know, also took us down the, the road of, you know, how do we do portfolio management? How do we do application rationalization? All those things. And then, you know, if we were going to you know, move something to the cloud, you know, what were the requirements around that? Um, and, you know, do we build, you know, uh, a new data center? Do we co-locate? Do we have a hybrid solution? Do we rehost? Do we refactor? All these things kind of became, you know, the, the thought processes uh, behind, you know, driving us to the cloud. And we decided based on, you know, uh, uh, a business case analysis that that cloud was definitely right for us. Now, there's also, you know, we also look, had to look at security as well, right? Um, you know, financial analysis plus security. Security was one of those things where, you know, we knew we felt safe with what we were doing, you know, in the data centers and on premise, but, you know, the cloud also represented risk. And so we, we had to tackle that and look at how would we safely and securely move applications to the cloud as well. And we chose that we were going to go to the public cloud, which I think was probably not as popular at that time, um, but we, we made our, our stake and moved towards, towards the cloud. Uh, I will tell you at this point, we set up an organization um, called our cloud management environment, which actually kind of shepherds and helps application teams uh, move their applications. We work closely with our security organization to automate a lot of our processes inside of security. Um, we looked at, you know, building out things like what does a cloud services brokerage look like? Um, what, you know, what does cloud security look like, look like from a CASB perspective? Um, you know, so with all of that, I think we formulated a plan. It took us a little longer than I, than I thought, but I think the formulation of that plan um, really helped prevent a lot of missteps. One of the things that I know we didn't do as well as we could, um, we didn't think about you know the financial part of it as much as we should have, right? Um, because we were all pretty much used to operating in a sunk cost environment on premise and at the data centers, right? Um, but now that you're moving out to the cloud, you need you have to change your behavior. Um, in terms of consumption. And, you know, if you're not using something, you need to shut it down or you're going to pay for it. Um, those are things that we hadn't talked about. We hadn't looked at things like reserved instances. Um, but quickly, uh, with our first couple of applications that we moved, we, we realized that, you know, that uh, refactoring and re-engineering was really critical if you want to get, you know, optimized apps and save costs. The other thing we, we realized is that we could push these apps out really, really fast. So that was a really good news story. And our resiliency, meaning our downtime for those cloud apps is, is almost zero. So this was a great news story. Um, and we, we are probably about the 30% mark right now of all the applications that, that we've got to move to the cloud. So we're, we're moving briskly, things are going well. Um, but this is really huge, especially from a resiliency perspective, because you know OIT CBP uh, supports a, a really big mission, a mission that you know where we're securing the border, why we're supporting safe travel, and and we're you know facilitating trade. And they sound you know really like they don't sound really big, but they are. These are humongous things in terms of our overall national security. Um, if you look at, you know, there's about $11.1 billion a day that flows through our applications, right, to the tune of about $2.4 trillion a year. That's huge. That, that's just huge impacts in terms of our economy. You know, getting on an airplane and knowing pretty much that, that you're going to have a safe flight is, is something else that's important. And making sure that our borders are, are safe as well and secure. Um, but with that, the cloud helps us to deliver capability to those customers so much faster, so much more effectively. And, you know, if we start to get the efficiencies right, right, we can do that transition from all the on-premise to a mostly cloud sort of environment where, where we are really returning value to the American taxpayer. Great. That's incredibly impressive. And you said 30% of your applications have moved to the cloud today. Where, where do you expect to be in two years? So I, I expect to be right around 50%. And I'm, I'm, I've told OMB that I plan to be you know, migrated 
um, by late 2024, early 2025. Now that's that's a big goal because we have some really complex and, and massive applications that we've got to move. But you know we've we've experienced the learning curve up front where we didn't know a lot about what we were doing and that value. You know we we all those lessons learned have been you know put back into the organization as a whole. So we we've learned and we're we're getting better at every one of the applications that we move. So right now, one of the big things for me is you know what kind of model do we use in the future in terms of you know finances and cost, um, whether it's you know a chargeback, a showback. Um, right you know right now we are doing most of our costing at an enterprise level. Um, but you know, it, within the next year, I mean, we just you know, you know put together a major uh, project effort on you know how do we tag correctly, whether it's from a technical or business or security or a monitoring aspect. Um, when we started, you know, we kind of did uh, you know what you would do to do something quickly, which kind of has you know really basic tags. But as we grew, I mean, very very fast, we we re realized that um, that tagging. Um, really isn't going to be adequate for the long haul. So that's going to be critical to us being able to, you know, manage financially and and use the money appropriately um, that we've been given. Got it. Okay. In incredibly ambitious. And Reggie, from your side, where did, where are you today with the cloud? How many applications does VA have living in the cloud today? And what do your what do you envision in a couple of years from now? Yeah, no. So we have from a, a named application, let's say enterprise uh, level applications that are running in our um, you know six or seven data centers uh, that, that that we have, um, because we do have quite a bit more from a from a um, uh, from a landscape standpoint that are that are distributed out at our various um, uh, medical centers and and um, regional offices across the country. Uh, but named applications, named enterprise applications, our portfolio sits right about uh, 800 or so uh, applications. Up to this point, we have 20% of our of our workload uh, running in the in the cloud. The expectation being that we'll we'll ramp that up to about 30%. Um, you know, with uh, with an eye on you know 400 or so applications uh, running. You know, essentially 50%. Uh, by the end of 2024, that's our trajectory at this point. Uh, our our portfolio continues to evolve uh, as we get new uh, capabilities and, and develop uh, those, um, uh, those those capabilities. Uh, we're going cloud native with those. So so really, the 800 or so, if those aren't you know modernized to some other um, uh, you know capability that that we we take to to cloud native, uh, just assuming that we still have those. 800 plus uh, applications in our portfolio in, in 2024. Uh, again, the expectation is 50% of those are going to be uh, in the cloud, where all of our new um, uh, capabilities will go cloud native. So we won't continue to kind of grow our our on-prem, you know, cloud build out. I mean, our on-prem application build out. We will, you know, again focus on on you know, again cloud native uh, and SaaS models uh, while we work down our our technical debt or application, you know, technical debt, um, you know, to again about half of that being running in the cloud and the other half running in uh, our data centers as we also continue to uh, uh, consolidate and um, um, improve upon our, our overall on-premise footprint. Got it. So when you say cloud native, you're talking about new systems being born in the cloud. What does what, what the, the term now cloud native mean to you? Yeah, so so we have a, a digital platform strategy that we're working. This uh, in the, in the cloud is central to that, uh, along with platform services. So uh, we look okay. at two things. Uh, there's there's you know containerization, if you will. Uh, that that to me is is essentially a, a path step or a pivot to uh, replatforming. Uh, but then there are, there are things that we're we're looking at that are you know either low code, no code oriented. Um, um, Capabilities uh, that uh, lend themselves better uh, to, you know, just fully, um, you know, being PaaS or again SaaS, you know, oriented uh, um, um, capabilities that don't have the same needs and the same uh, requirements as some of our traditional or legacy uh, applications that are that are that have a tendency to look 
you know, more like, you know, virtual machines or, you know, have some sort of, of, of you know, server-based, server client and, and you know, storage-based, uh, you know, requirements. So getting getting away from that as we look at our, our new solutions and our capabilities that we're looking to, uh, uh, to help drive, um, there's a lot of things that we're doing from a, um, uh, from a from an AI perspective, MI perspective, uh, you know, also our, our um, um, you know, basically handling of of of, of and processing of, of um, mail or uh, other kinds of things that would traditionally have a uh, have a back end solution. You know, looking to you know automate those in a, in a very again um, uh, robotic kind of way, so that we don't have to look at you know traditional you know uh, constructs of, of server server storage builds and, and all that. So uh, so that's what I mean by you know looking at those cloud native capabilities that are out there uh, to meet those solutions as opposed to uh, you know building out monolithic um, um, infrastructure to support you know a, a, a solution. Got it. Okay, that's very very helpful. Thank you. And Ed, popping back over to you. Um, how do, how does CBP, how do you have visibility into your cloud bills today? Do you get them, is there any rhyme or reason to them? How does it come to you and, you know, how do you, do you have a bunch of guys in a room that's sort of dissecting the bills and how, how does all that work? So, so I think that's a, uh, definitely a, a little bit of a loaded question um, and I'll, I'll get to that shortly. But one of the things I wanted to mention as well, I um, one of the things that was noted just few minutes ago was, you know, low code, no code, SaaS solutions. Um, yes. I will tell you in terms of cloud native for us, um, you know, um, whether it's uh, IS, PaaS, SaaS, but one of the things I just wanted to note is that since we've started this and our application teams, development teams, you know, using DevOps can produce applications much, much faster and can drive capability much, much faster. It's also generated um, or at least released pent up demand that we never knew we had. So, you know, we are growing new native applications at a pretty uh, phenomenal rate as well, which is a little bit surprising um, because, you know, when I first started this, I was thinking that we would be, it would be more of an IT modernization effort, but it's also, it's also growing really rapidly, which is also, which kind of points to the fact that you really have to, understand the business case that you're dealing with and be able to track all the dollars. So I just wanted to make note of that. Um, now to get back uh, to you in terms of, you know, what are we doing to track? Um, I mentioned earlier, we have, we had done some basic tagging. Um, we have, we get the bills from, from, you know, our CSPs like Amazon and others. And they're incredibly hard to read and to ingest and to look at. That's the only way to describe it. Um, it's really complex. Uh, yeah. And you know, one of the things that we're looking at is how do we how do we take these bills right from across multiple CSPs or cloud vendors and put them into a format that makes logical sense that we can use across the enterprise um, and. We are we are we are have a, a proof of concept underway. We're looking at how we can do that. There are a couple of really good companies out there that have great tools. Um, and but I you know right now what we have is literally you know a small team of people that are use, using things like you know power tools etc. to try and and get you know read through all this data and justice data. Um, it is not the long term approach. You know we've got to have you know. Um, a better way of ingesting that information. We've got to have some AI, if you will, in terms of the analytics. Um, we've also, you know, a little bit of RPA, if you will, as well, in terms of, you know, how do we sort right. through and, and, and call out certain data elements that we really need. Um, but this is part of the journey, and this is where we really need to mature. And I will tell you uh, that just yesterday, we spent probably, we with our financial organization, um, you know, about two solid hours trying to figure out, you know, what is our way ahead? How do we do this smartly? Um, because, you know, it's from a, if you're looking at it from a lean perspective, right, uh, we really need to do it right up front and do the analysis so that we don't create a whole lot of rework down the road, um, which means you really have to understand your business model and what you're doing. Um, so we're trying to get there. 
um, it's, it's definitely a journey. I wish I could say we were already there. Uh, we are not. Got it. Okay. And Reggie, do you go through a similar process? Are you, you sifting through? You, you did mention AI and machine learning. Uh, are you using some of that approach and sifting through your cloud bills to understand what's going on? Yeah, I wish we I wish we were very similar to to you know what Ed was saying. We you know from a from an Azure perspective, you know it's strictly Power BI that we're you know kind of uh, have a have a team that's really powering through that. Uh, that said, I mean we we do feel we have pretty good um, line of sight of project uh, or application product, if you will, uh, to cost um, you know tracking. So so we we feel pretty pretty solid in terms of our transparency there. Um, but it is a uh, it, it is a, a work. It's a task uh, that 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 a team has to uh, to kind of keep track of and and you know connect those dots. Uh, on the AWS side, we use uh, QuickSight that that kind of helps us with a lot of that um, uh, tagging and tracking as well. Again, we have to uh, um, to tie our our costs. We don't um, you know have a while we do have a centralized. Um, um, Funding model, uh, we do have to tie our costs specifically back uh, to the various administrations and, and their uh, their needs and, and and so on and so forth. So it's one of those things where we have to you know show the um, the, the the cost of consumption and the, and the uh, the associated um, um, you know impacts of decisions you know that are being made. And so key to that is is identifying exactly you know what uh, consumption is occurring. Uh, per application or per product, uh, if you will. Uh, again, that's that's largely um, you know work that's 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 being done by a, you know a handful of folks, you know, using some of those power tools and some of those um, um, uh, some of those capabilities that that uh, the, the the various platforms have. Uh, but we do expect and and, and are working towards um, you know moving to a a more uh, TBM oriented model, uh, leveraging uh, a lot of the capabilities that we're already doing with our on-prem environment, our overall, uh, you know, financial management uh, environment. So, uh, what we end up with on the other side will, um, um, on the other side of that effort uh, of, of, you know, migrating some of those, that, some of that work, uh, some of that power work, if you will, uh, to you know a more uh, mature um, financial tracking model will again. Uh, tie back to the to what we're doing on the infrastructure side, uh, and what we're doing on, on that side of, obviously is, um, you know, Appio is our, our is centerpiece. Uh, so whatever we do from a cloud perspective, we'll have you know integration and touch points to uh, uh, to that environment, so that we can tell that that full on story, uh, you know, at the um, uh, at the macro level, as opposed to you know how we're doing it now. Got it. But well, you did allude to the the notion of I, I, we call it rate setting, show back, charge back, and billing. Is that part of your strategy ultimately to hand out cloud bills back to the different consumers, the business units, the the regions? What, what are your thoughts around that, Reggie? If you could follow through on your thoughts there. Yeah, sure. So so right now it's about it's about uh, you know what is good about our process thus far is. And, and it's it's uh, you know we've I, I like to give us credit for the the, the, the far side and, and thinking of of you know there was going to obviously be a pivot from uh, our on-prem um, uh, approach which was you know really sunk costs and so you know the actual consumption of, of resources you know in our various data centers uh, you know products applications um, you know the administrations if you will weren't necessarily seeing those costs, you know, at the granular level of here's what it takes to to run uh, this, you know, this application or, or or to to meet your requirements, you know, associated with this capability. Um, and you want to, you know, uh, grow that, and 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 we understand, and we just you know we just did that. Uh, and so so now we have, you know, uh, essentially a model that is leading us more to, you know. Um, uh, capabilities with 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 um, or consumption with with uh, real real costs associated with it, so the business can make you know better decisions relative to their uh, features and, and 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 requirements. So uh, so at the end of the day, what we have is a very you know um, 
elaborate connection to those various applications and to those various uh, products uh, so that we tie those. Uh, we don't, we don't, when we're going through our process of, of ingesting and reviewing, uh, intaking, if you will, uh, an application or a product to the cloud, uh, you know, as a part of that, in addition to feasibility and, and, and other, you know, considerations that, that we have, engineering, you know, and all that, um, you know, funding capability and funding, um, um, uh, you know, long-term, you know, funding associated with that, that application or product has to be a part of the conversation. Uh, and if you don't plan for it, if you haven't, you know, considered it, haven't put it in your uh, multi-year plan, um, then, you know, you, you have to build the business case and go back and do that uh, as a part of uh, the decision factor for, for migrating to the cloud. So, so in essence, we don't have a centralized, while we pay the, the you know, our, our, uh, our various cloud spend centrally, uh, our actual cost accounting for that is actually decentralized and it goes directly uh, to the product application um, or or the supporting um, um, business line to account for those costs, plan for those costs, uh, and then pay those bills as we distribute it out to them. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a lot of insight there and a lot of forward thinking on where it's all going to go. And, Ed, on your side, are you looking at this notion of showback and billing on you know, the consumers of cloud? Uh, absolutely, we are we are already uh, uh, using a, a showback model. Um, the enterprise level presently is just is considering, you know, what are we going to do in the future, um, and that, you know, will will it really be a chargeback? Uh, because a lot of these, a lot of the things that we do in IT actually becomes literally an enterprise level bill, right? So we're still kind of, you know, uh, noodling through that, trying to determine what's going to be best for us. Uh, but right now, we're providing all of our customers, which for me mostly are application development teams, um, their monthly bills based on you know the, the cloud services provider. Um, but I want to tell you, we're, we're doing some other things as well. Um, you know, right now we've created an organization called Enterprise Cloud Services, um, which I've stood up under my you know engineering organization. Um, and that organization, ECS, will also have, you know, uh, uh, a compartment, if you will, that will deal with um, financial ops, right? So it's going to be, it's all about delivering services, and we're going to use the cloud services brokerage approach. So we're going to be looking at how do we deliver services to our customers, and a big part of that is how do you manage the cost of those services? How do you, and they're, they're utility-based, right? So how do you, uh, how do you also you know, get you know, the best bang for the buck? How do you leverage economies of scale? How do you, you know, what happens at some point from the technical perspective, if you will, if it's more advantageous, right, to move from, from one CSP to another? So there's that engineering portion of that, whether, you know, did you containerize? You know, can you get a better deal at some other cloud vendor at some point in time? Um, so we're building this organization right now called ECS that's going to handle a lot of that because that structure, honestly, even though we have similar things inside of the, the data center management now, but it was never intended to be to do the things that are going to be required for the cloud and I'll call it cloud future. So that's happening. In addition to that, um, we're, we're looking to put out or let a new contract either um, first quarter of FY21 or maybe early second quarter, and I think it's being called Enterprise Cloud and Integration Services. And that's going to have a huge tie-in, right, from an integration approach back to all the service delivery that we're doing and back to the cost and financial management. Um, one of the things that's really near and dear to me is, you know, uh, never, you know, violating any of our cost thresholds. And part of that is having the infrastructure, both the human capital and the technology in place um, to prevent any sort of anti-deficiency act violation. So we're trying to get the governance together. We've got a really good plan and, you know, it's kind of all converging and we, we hope to see that, you know, uh, early next year. I'm pretty excited about it. But it's taken a lot of, I'll say, thought leadership to get us to this point. We've had a, a phenomenal uh, AC and uh, assistant commissioner and assistant commissioner Landfried, who just recently retired. And now we've got um, 
Acting Assistant Commissioner Sanji Bagwalia, uh, both both gentlemen very visionary and have shepherded this approach. So we are moving forward, and I, I think we're going to see um, a, a cumulative sort of synergistic effect between the engineering, the technology, you know, people, processes, and tools. That's really going to help us get you know the best out of the cloud. Got it. We had a slight audio issue there. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, terrific. Um, and just to continue on, both of you have talked a little bit about Agile, and Ed, Ed, I'll stay with you. How are you weaving that into your cloud strategy? Because you've got these software guys, you know, you're moving from Waterfall to Agile, a lot of um, scrum teams and agile development groups, sec DevOps, because certainly cyber is a big factor and you're creating these code bases. Is there a governance model or how are you tying these things together um, as part of your strategy or is that left to a separate group? Do you collaborate together? How, do, how does that all come to be? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. That's a really good question. Um, you know, first of all, CVP, um, had has moved, you know, to Agile and or had moved to Agile a long, a long time ago, right? So Agile is part of our DNA and how we do business. So for us, you know, in, you know, building out, you know, CI/CD pipelines um, became very was very, very normal, and so we we built into our Sec DevOps pipeline um, a lot of the governance that's required. Our real approach that's going to take us there is called infrastructure as code. So as we move away from the, the normal uh, data center, all those sorts of virtual elements that were you know, provided in the past by data centers are going to actually be you know, created down at the application development layer. So all of a sudden now, you really don't need that data center as much anymore. That's, and it will eventually atrophy um, and become, you know, a very, very small part of what we do. Um, but I will tell you that the, the pipeline itself will be the place where we put in the governance that's required. That's why, as we were talking earlier about um, an anti-deficiency act violation, I was mentioning that, you know, you build that governance, you build those thresholds into the actual pipeline. So as a developer goes through, there's approvals that are required to get to certain thresholds of cost. So there's a lot of cost control that are, that's being built into our pipeline, even presently. Now, I will say that it's nation presently, right? Very, it's, it's not as mature as, as, as it could be, and it's going to get better. But we, we've already thought about that. The other thing is, again, going back to the monitoring um, in terms of tagging and monitoring, um, looking at what we're going to be doing inside of ECS, that's going to have all those capabilities and tools where we can actually monitor what our application teams are doing and provide reports back to them on how efficiently or effectively are they actually, you know, are they operating. Um, for instance, you know, not only did you meet the cost threshold of what you produced, you know, are you actually using the application once it's spun up in the cloud? Uh, when's the last time you use it? You know, if it's a development environment, you know, has it been 30, 60 days since you actually touched any of that work? Well, if not, we should stand it down. I mean, those are the sorts of things uh, that that need to be tracked um, and that need to be governed. And um, I, I heard that Aptio mentioned earlier, uh, we're definitely using that as one of our POCs and um, uh, we're getting a lot of value at present. So um, ECS, the governance body, all those kind of in, exist in my organization. I'm really happy about that. Now, we're not standalone players, right? We're working closely with all of our application teams, um, and we're working very closely um, with our stakeholders, our customer base. Um, and in my case, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, Border Patrol, Air and Marine, OFO, um, and um, we're also working very closely with our CTO's office to ensure that we're doing the right technology insertion at the right time to continue to drive value for our overall customer base. Got it. Okay, Reggie, on your side, how are you weaving in Agile into your cloud strategy? Because some folks have it off to a different group and you know, not, never shall they talk and suddenly you get these cloud bills and a big function of that is Agile. Are you using a collaborative approach like Ed or how does it look over at VA? 
Yeah, it sounds sounds very similar. Uh, so we have a, um, you know, so obviously the the, the DevSecOps that's that's principled, right? The, as a matter of fact, uh, the the development you know side of the house as well as uh, uh, the infrastructure side, like my area, all sit within the the, the DevSecOps um, uh, claimancy, right? So. So there's there's very little uh, distance, if you will, between um, our um, our build capabilities and, and how we focus uh, to uh, the actual delivery and and, and uh, capability considerations that the development teams uh, work on. Um, and so what we what we found is uh, obviously you know everything that we do from a uh, uh, from a cloud perspective, uh, as well as um, uh, a lot of the 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 you know, traditional infrastructure uh, areas, um, you know, have a, 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 a strong touch point or connection point uh, with the agile development that, that, that we um, uh, put forward. Um, but what we've, what we've pivoted to and, and what we are uh, probably in our uh, adolescence on is, um, um, you know, product line management, right? And so what that is actually, you know, doing uh, to you know, better enable all of this is bringing the um, our, our customer base, our, our um, stakeholders directly, you know, into our, our agile framework, uh, if you will, and, and being a part of those uh, those decisions. So as you're you're moving things through, you know, CI/CD pipeline, there's actual uh, you know engagement and and um, um, integration, if you will, directly, you know, with the with the business uh, as we. Um, you know, make decisions on uh, backlogs and uh, you know, grooming the uh, uh, the, the, the various um, uh, releases and, and, and all those things. Uh, the, the the elements specific to the um, uh, you know to the cloud and to our to our approach there is strictly you know about you know automation and orchestration, essentially getting uh, some of the brick and mortar things that we were doing before uh, you know kind of out of our space and getting those. Uh, things that's kind of as Ed kind of mentioned, you know that that you know infrastructure as code kind of uh, capabilities, you know, to our uh, you know to our product team, so that they can you know make the decisions they need to make, uh, you know, and, and and create the capabilities that they need to to do without you know really having to go in and and you know have some some manual or some you know intervention, if you will, from uh, some of the, uh, the 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 cloud engineers and and and, and, and such. So it's it's integral, um, but I, I say again that that a lot of it is is about um, extending that that agile uh, capability. We, we also have um, you know a safe um, uh, model that that that's kind of um, married to our, our our product line management structure. But the, a lot of a lot of that is really about bringing uh, the business directly into the uh, uh, into the fray of, of of some of these deliverables, so that. Um, you know, again, we can uh, meet them at their ri own rhythm and uh, not, you know, have this this kind of, um, you know, you know, we're 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 vastly um, focused on on getting any get rid of any kind of big bang, you know, approach deliverables. Right, everything is MVP, uh, and so in order to do that, you, you obviously, you know, you know, have to be doing agile, but but more importantly, uh, you, you have to bring those business partners, you know, into the um, uh, into the fray and, and help them with, you know, their own, uh, you know, way about, uh, you know, navigating Agile and all that. And we feel that uh, we're we're working towards that pretty well. And and uh, uh, that's starting to become the, the the mantra. So you start, you know, you're starting to get a sense, or we're starting to get a sense that, you know, at least that's becoming part of the the business's taxonomy. So so I think we're we're starting to hit the mark in some areas, and we'll just continue to uh, uh, iterate that. Got it. Thank you, Reggie. That's great, great information. Um, you know, this whole session today, we, we've got about 11 minutes left, and, you know, the, the title is Five Steps to Stop Chaotic Cloud Spend, and I think you guys have hit on a lot of this stuff, so I'm just going to breeze through a couple slides here and bring it um, back together here at the end, but I heard about tagging, understanding those cloud bills, consolidating the bills. I heard taxonomy so you can understand uh, the cloud bills in a common language. That's very important, not only for more seasoned cloud guys like yourselves who are implementing that, 
but everyone out there is trying to understand, you know, how do you get started with cloud from a management perspective? You know, these are sort of the five key areas to keep an eye on, to say the least. Uh, quit treating cloud providers in a silo. Uh, really have the ability to normalize that data from the different vendors and look at A, A to B and understand the variance between the cloud players. And one of you did say a single pane of glass to give you that view across the, the different providers and the bills that you're getting. Uh, another key area is prevent the business from consuming public cloud like it's free. And a lot of that has to do with governance and some of the areas you guys are talking about, but tagging is certainly key to get the proper hygiene and therefore the completeness and validity of what's going on in your cloud usage because you know I remember one uh, agency that started down the path of their cloud and you know a lot of the tags weren't turned on so they didn't have the proper visibility to assign consumption to the proper business owners and applications and services that are being consumed. So certainly part of the best practices make sure uh, you know who's consuming what as part of the overall process. Another thing that you guys talked about is, you know, how do you avoid surprises? A lot of it is planning. I mean, it's incredible the amount of planning and forethought that you guys went into to make this a collaborative approach and having a consistent way to understand the usage and the cloud spend. So you can do things such as show back, charge back, and billing at the end of the day. And that's another question I wanted, I, I may have not had on some of the, the original list, but you know, how do you guys collaborate with the finance side of the house, the budgeting, teams, the, the CFO, if you will, does that come into your discussions when you're going through all this? And I'll start with you, Ed, if that's part of your strategy too. Do you have sit downs with, with the finance side of the house? Uh, absolutely. Um, we, we definitely do. Uh, I mentioned the meeting yesterday on tagging, but it, it actually had more to do more than tagging. It was a meeting that, you know, we're looking at federal spend, right? One of the things that we have you know, in this brave new world is you've got the old budgetary process versus, you know, utility-based model from the cloud, right? Consumption-based model. Well, you know, there's an anticipation that early on in the new fiscal year that we might be under a continuing resolution. So we might not be able to have a certain amount of dollars available to us to actually fund our utility-based cloud model. So working, you know, with um, our financial managers, our CFO, if you will, uh, to make sure that we've got enough money, you know, in the budget now, right, so that we can actually, you know, have those resources, those cloud resources available for that period where we may not have, you know, dollars coming in from the budget. So not forward funding, but definitely planning to make sure you've got um, enough reserve, if you will, from, you know, you mentioned reserved instances and such, so that, you know, if the federal budget is, you know, doesn't arrive when it's expected, that we can actually deal with those sorts, that's, you know, those sorts of problems or, or have a contingency. Um, so we are um, joined at the hip, if you will, uh, with our, our financial managers and CFO. Otherwise, um, we're going to have real problems. And we've, we've learned that up front. Um, we've learned that we've got to, you know, monitor, you know, with incredible vigilance because, you know, utility-based models, um, it's like having your, house, your your electricity on at home, right? If you leave all your, your, your lights and everything on in your house and you never turn them off and you get a surprise, you know, bill, uh, that's not usually uh, welcome to uh, So for us, it's the same thing. You know, it's not the old data center, right? The, the data center where everything was sunk cost and you can, you know, uh, set it and forget it almost in any cases. This is not the world we live in. So being tied to our financial managers and CFO is pretty critical to us. Got it. And Reggie, for you, is that is that a collaborative experience with the CFO or CFO of IT at VA? How does it work for you? Yeah, very, very, very similar. We have, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, obviously there's there's the the you know the overall uh, edict to to shift from that capex to an opex model. Uh, obviously, you know, to to ensure that we're, you know, tracking, uh, you know, that 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 level of 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 spend, you know, and and you know, tying in those consequences of of, of decisions to you know to those spend actions. Uh, but our approach is kind of twofold. Uh, there is, you know, the, the the cost of what we consider, you know, the platform or the launch pad, right? That's more of a traditional enterprise, 
you know, um, uh, thing that we have to, you know, identify and, and you know, obviously, um, um, you know, make clear what we're spending just to just to be in that uh, in that fray, if you will. Uh, and then there is the, the teasing out of the actual uh, products and application and their, their, their costs associated with it, those cloud, uh, you know, credit consumptions and, and such. Uh, that's where, where we're probably a little bit more um, uh, or we have a little bit more work to do in terms of, of how we manage that because obviously when we purchase cloud credits uh, and you have one application that's, that's, that's you know, overburning and another application that's underburning, um, you know, how do you, from a, from an overall aggregate, you know, CFO perspective, uh, make those, those trade-offs in terms of, you know, where, you know, excess credits, uh, can be transferred to, you know, to other, other applications or other products or other portfolios, if you will. So we're working through that, but it's all about transparency, right? And so it's, it's about, you know, capturing, capturing that information, uh, in terms of, um, uh, in terms of, you know what those costs are for for a given application, uh, right off the bat, and then tracking that all the way through to to consumption. Got it. Okay, thank you. And this is five steps. So the fifth is um, this notion of slashing reserved instance waste. I think that's a big area that a lot of folks are trying to understand. Sometimes you're making a bet. Uh, you don't want to make a bet. You want to be prudent and understand uh, how you're you're properly budgeting. Accordingly, there's a lot of sophistication now and tools and solutions out there that can actually show you what's the best package you should invest in from the different cloud providers based upon your historical spend and your budgeted go forward plan. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. So full circle, you guys are uh, clearly very sophisticated cloud experienced uh, managers and senior leaders within your organizations. This is really, this slide was believe it or not, built prior to this session, but I think you guys talked about almost all of this is really reducing cloud waste, uh, you know, getting ahead of the game. So there's fewer panic attacks. I wouldn't even call it that, but, you know, trouble areas that pop up, you can definitely address them well ahead of time to understanding your business. And that cross-organization trust and goodwill that you guys are doing not only with your own uh, customers, but clearly across the aisle to sec DevOps teams and finance, I think is critical. And then you both mentioned the accountability and auditability of what's going on. So you can be transparent, uh, not only to the organization, but uh, how you go forward and build credibility across across uh, the organization. Uh, we did have a couple Q and A's. Um, some are uh, sort of just um, housekeeping stuff. Yes, you'll. Uh, this is being recorded and there will be a copy of the presentation available to all the attendees. And uh, lastly, I just wanna Thank everyone, thank our uh, guests this afternoon, Reggie Cummings from VA, Ed Mays from CBP, for all your hard work and efforts that you guys do for your agencies and your insights, your assist to a lot of other agencies and attendees to the session of helping them understand how to best manage their cloud world. So I'll turn it back over to our ACT-IAC uh, moderator and thank you everyone for attending today. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. Thanks to our sponsor, Aptio, and thanks, Bob, Reggie, and Edward, for the robust presentation. Uh, just a foot stomp, a friendly reminder that the webinar will be available on demand in the coming days. And to please stay tuned to ACT-IAC uh, for more virtual events coming up. Thanks again for attending.